we have a very, very nice uh, 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 program uh, after, namely after Diego talked uh, uh, many things about uh, uh, Chichon's diagram. I'm now introducing the person who is sitting in, in the uh, uh, former office of, uh, uh, of Chichon's and uh, uh, Piotr Bodin Najeya from uh, University of Wrocław uh, is now going to talk, talk about on forcing names for ultra filters. So please. Thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Of course, I am very happy and proud that I can speak on such an occasion. And yes, I, I, I want to start uh, by telling something about my office, actually, because uh, in my office there is a picture hung on the wall. In fact, it's not exactly a picture, it's a first page of a mathematical paper, you can see it now. And uh, I don't know who hanged it and when, I, I'm sure it's for a long time because I think I remember it even as a student when I was visiting this office. And, uh, and at some point I, I, I learned that this is first page of a paper by Sakaya Fucino. And, uh, and that uh, during his stay in Berlin, he was quite often a visitor uh, at our university. Uh, and and uh, he had uh, connections with, with, with our set theorists like Chihon. Uh, so, so probably this is the reason. I guess Sakai gave it to, to somebody to, to, to teach him some Japanese or, or something like that. Uh, uh, but uh, <coughs> uh, anyway, uh, uh, Sakai Fucino had, had and is still having uh, impact of our set theory group. And this, this, this paper hang on this wall is like uh, something like a material emanation of this impact. Uh, so uh, yeah. And I, I, I'm going to speak today on uh, part of research I was doing with uh, Damian Sobota from Vienna and, uh, and uh, Katarzyna Cegiełka, uh, who was my master student. But she's, in fact, an economist. Uh, and and uh, what I will speak about is contained in this uh, two preprints. I, I mean, the preprint with Damian is finished and published on archives. And uh, the second one is still not finished. So the topic is the following. So the setting is that we have a, a Boolean algebra, A, and another Boolean algebra, P, but uh, with, the, with this algebra P I'm going to force. So, so think about it as a complete Boolean algebra. So sometimes you want to uh, you want to consider uh, this Boolean algebra from this this old Boolean algebra from the from the ground model in the extension, and look at the ultra filters in this extension on this Boolean algebra. So there are there are some old ultra filters, there are some new sometimes, and and this situation uh, happens, for example, uh, for example. Very often, in fact, because if, if, if you think about reals uh, as ultra filters on the Cantor algebra, then, then whenever you speak about, about reals in the forcing extension, you, in, in a way, in a sense, you speak about uh, ultra filters on the, on the old Boolean algebra, right? Uh, on the, yeah. So this is, this is the first thing. And uh, the other application of, I mean, the, the other situations when you can consider something like that is when you uh, take some more complicated uh, Boolean algebra in the ground model uh, and then look at the stone space of this old Boolean algebra in the extension. And this, 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 this gives you a topological space in the extension. And sometimes this topological space has very nice or peculiar properties. I will give you some examples later on. 
So if you want to uh, deal with ultra filters uh, with any object in the forcing extension, of course, you have this pain of, 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 of dealing with names. Names are quite complicated uh, usually, and, and the more complicated objects you consider, the more complicated names you have. And ultra filters are quite complicated, but in fact, it, the situation is not so bad. Mm. So first, uh, imagine you have some P name for an ultra filter uh, on the Boolean algebra. Uh, and consider the following function. Uh, the function which assigns to elements of A uh, the true values of the, the following uh, sentence. Uh, so, so the, the, the supremum of all conditions forcing that, that, that A is, is in the ultra field. Uh, so this function is in fact a Boolean homomorphism. Uh, I'm not going to prove it, it's, it's, it's quite simple. It, it, the only thing you, you, you use is the, that, that this is the name for the ultra filter. Uh, so if you have a name for an ultra filter on an old Boolean algebra, then, then, then it gives you a Boolean homomorphism from this algebra into, uh, into uh, the forcing algebra. And uh, the other way around. So uh, imagine you have a Boolean homomorphism from A to P. Then you can produce a name uh, in the following way. And uh, or, 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 I, uh, sorry, I'm omitting checks uh, in what I'm writing. Yeah, so so when I write a, I mean the standard name for for a. Uh, this is object from the ground model, right? Uh, so uh, so you can produce a name. Apparently, this is a name, and again, not not much work is needed to to see that it is named for an ultra filter on a. Uh, so finally, you have something like that. You have this Boolean algebra, and you can you can see that that the p names for ultra filters on on A uh, uh, correspond to, uh, to 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 Boolean homomorphisms in the following way. Uh, so this is kind of this this Boolean homomorphism is a kind of nice name for ultra filter on on uh, on old Boolean algebra. And one more remark. Uh, uh, so look, in, in set theoretic topology, when we think about elements of the stone space, of course we think about ultra filters. Uh, but uh, but in, in, in fact, uh, you can think about uh, it as not as an ultra filter, but as homomorphisms from A, from a Boolean algebra, to the trivial Boolean algebra. Uh, somehow, then, this is more natural uh, approach to, because of various reasons. And uh, uh, in some parts of mathematics, this approach is, is, uh, is the main one to, to, to elements of stone space. It is not very uh, convenient for 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 us for set theory topologists. So uh, so we rather think about it as ultra filters. Uh, but uh, but when you look at it uh, in this way, you can see that okay. So ultra filters are homomorphism to trivial algebra, and if you extend, uh, if you force and you go into forcing expansion. Then what, what what is changing? Only change codomain, yeah, from trivial algebra into this algebra which which uh, with which we force. So this is very natural, uh, and uh, it is particularly uh, nice to consider it in case of uh, uh, random forcing. So. So uh, let me define measure algebra. Measure, there are many measure algebras. Uh, uh, measure algebra of type kappa is just the standard, uh, standard. Uh, you, you take the cube, you take uh, Borel, Borel set, and you, 
uh, mod out by uh, effect of level zero. Uh, yes, uh, what is lambda kappa is just uh, the standard Haar measure on, on this cube, right? Uh, so, if, uh, so in, in case of, of uh, let me just point uh, that that trivial algebra is in a sense also a measure algebra, and uh, m omega is 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 the, the the most common object which is called measure algebra, right? This is the, the, then the the measure is just the Lebesgue measure, and uh, if you force with and kappa, uh, for kappa uncountable, this is exactly adding kappa randomly. So uh, why it is, uh, why measure algebras are, uh, are, are nice in this setting? Uh, there are two main reasons, and I will present both of them. First, the, 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 the first one is this, the, the, the following. So if you have a Boolean homomorphism into a measure algebra, then this Boolean homomorphism induces a measure on uh, on A on a Boolean algebra A. You just you just tr tr transfer the, the, the this Haar measure uh, to your uh, Boolean algebra in the in the following way. This is a measure, but uh, measure in the sense uh, that it, it doesn't need to be countably additive, right? Because okay, we don't. Know anything about a Abuan algebra a? It can it, it may be not complete. So, uh, so here we we, we uh, consider finitely additive measure. And now, uh, if every homomorphism gives you a measure, and every homomorphism is connected to a, a, a every name for an transistor is connected to a Boolean homomorphism, then somehow every a uh, name for an ultra filter gives you a measure. Uh, here uh, by M, I mean some Boolean algebra, uh, some measure algebra. I, I don't want to specify, specify any kappa. Uh, so this is what I what, what I told you can you can assign to a name for an ultra filter a measure, and then uh, by looking at this measure, you can you can. Uh, Check some properties of these names for ultra filters. So, for, for example, if the measure is just the zero one measure, Dirac delta, then it is Dirac delta from some ultra filter on A in in a grant model, uh, so some old ultra filter, and then then this this means exactly that that your name is uh, is. Uh, here I, I, I use checks. So uh, that, that, that your name is for old, uh, exactly for this ultra filter, uh, which is in this Dirac delta, right? And, uh, and more generally, if, if the measure is purely atomic, uh, then you know that your name is, is, uh, is for some object from the ground model. So, for example, if 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 you consider not a single Dirac delta, but but some convex combination of, of let's say two Dirac deltas, then you don't know. Uh, of course, uh, it depends on generic what, what exactly will be this uh, this object in the extension, but you know that it be it will be either one ultra filter on, or another, but from the ground model. Right. So now, uh, now let let look let us look at the Cantor algebra, and uh, and now imagine that that uh, again you induce uh, you you take a measure a name you induce a measure, and uh, if if this measure is is the standard Lebesgue measure. Uh, then you, you know that, that your name is, is a random real. So for example, you, you can think what kind of, of homomorphism you can, you can take from Cantor algebra into M. Uh, now think that M is the, the, this, 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 this main measure algebra, this, this, this uh, M omega, right? Uh, then, then you can look at the Cantor algebra as the uh, algebra of Klopen chapters of the Cantor set. 
So you take a crop and touch it on the counter set and you assign the, uh, the, the, the element in Boolean algebra exactly, uh, exactly given by this crop method, right? So you mod out this crop method by, by measuring the group. Uh, then if you, then, then you obtain standard Lebesgue measure and, and then your name will be really this generic random region. Uh, and oh, again, more generally, if, if you know that your measure is non-atomic, then you know that, that, that your real is really uh, new. And uh, so, for, for example, uh, if you want, this approach can be used to, to, to create names, some particular names for, for, for real. For example, if you want to have a name for, for uh, for a subset of omega, which is I don't know of density zero, uh, and it is uh, and it is a new uh, uh, real, then you take then you take a measure, any measure with which 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 uh, assigns one to the to the set of density zero sets, and uh, and by Maharan theorem you can you can uh, find a homomorphism. Uh, which uh, which have uh, which induces exactly this measure, and then you know that your new real has density zero. But I'm not going to continue in this direction. So I want to show you one particular application of this approach to very old theorem. Uh, this is theorem by Kunen, and it says that in the classical random model, there are no well-ordered chains of Size omega two in the omega mod finite. So this is this is quite puzzling result saying that not only in the classical random model the, the tower number is is small is omega one but you in fact you cannot produce any tower of size omega two. Uh, if you try you will stack at some uh, at the point. Uh, at some omega one point, right? Um, uh, okay, and the tool to prove it, the, in the proof I want to present is the following. So the proposition is like that. Assume we have generalized continuum hypothesis. And suppose you have a sequence of homomorphisms Boolean homomorphism into into this uh, measure algebra. Then you can find uh, automorphism, uh, one automorphism. Uh, I, uh, uh, this I, I haven't written it, but it, 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 this automorphism you can even assume that it is measure preserving. So there is a measure preserving automorphism of the measure algebra, which swaps. Uh, one homomorphism into another. Okay. So I'm going to prove it, but first I'm going to show you how this implies uh, uh, the Cunard theorem. Uh, so uh, suppose that uh, there is some well ordered chain in, in the random mod of size omega 2. Then, uh, then what it means, it means that there is a, a, a chain of, of subsets of natural numbers, which is strictly increasing with respect to this almost inclusion. Almost inclusion meaning that, that it is inclusion modulo finite sets. Uh, so you, name, you know that there are, there are some sequence of names like that. So, you, you apply this approach that you can think about these names as uh, names given by Boolean homomorphisms, right? Uh, so, so we obtain a sequence of omega two sequence of Boolean homomorphism from Cantor algebra into uh, measure algebra uh, in the grand model, right? You, you, you go into grand model now. Now you uh, apply this proposition. So uh, now you know that there is a, a measure preserving automorphism. Uh, uh, I mean, 
we, we have this measure preserving automorphism swapping swapping uh, uh, phi alpha into phi beta and, and phi beta into phi alpha and you apply this automorphism to uh, in the in the way it is written so then of course uh, uh, measure algebra forces that that phi alpha is almost included in phi uh, phi beta uh, uh, if you apply this this automorphism you will you will get what is written right but uh, but in fact of course this is automorphism so so phi of the measure algebra is just the measure algebra and this automorphism acts in this foreign way that that now phi alpha is phi beta and phi beta is phi alpha and we obtain that phi beta is almost included in phi alpha which is of course a contradiction because we have assumed that the uh, the, the sequence is strictly increasing and this is a contradiction so uh, so this is just the application of this proposition so how to prove the proposition so we have this sequence of homomorphisms and we are looking for this automorphism. So first thing, uh, we use now uh, continuum hypothesis that, uh, that uh, we have omega two uh, homomorphisms. Every such homomorphism give you a, gives you a measure. Uh, there are only omega one measures in the ground model. So one measure, so we can assume that, that all this uh, homomorphism give you just one measure. Okay. Now, fix uh, an independent, independent in this usual meaning, so theoretical meaning, family uh, generating C. So you can think that C n is is the is the cylinder, this this clope, and in the Cantor set, which which uh, uh, consisting of all elements of Cantor set, which has one on the nth. Uh, and element. Now we we say that that an element of the counter set is a chunk uh, with respect to this to this generating family if it is of the following form. Okay, so uh, every element of the counter algebra is a finite Excuse union. Me. Excuse me. Um, Asaf asked the question, uh, what, what are the quantifiers be, before alpha and beta? Because you just said alpha and beta. Perhaps there are two different uh, alpha and beta so that, uh, or, or something like that, or, or for all alpha and all. Sorry, but in the proposition, the, right? Uh, in the switching. Ah, yes, 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 sorry. There is alpha and beta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry, sorry. Uh, so, um, yes, then there is an alpha and beta and then automorphism uh, exchanging quantity another. So the quantifier is, uh, uh, there exists. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, chunks. So every element of counter algebra is a finite union of chunks. Uh, and we will say that, 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 that uh, alpha and beta are symmetric uh, if, if the following holds. So every chunk A and B, we have, uh, we have, we have this, this equivalent. Okay, I will repeat, repeat this definition. So, uh, but now in the claim. So I claim that there are uh, alpha and beta which are symmetric, so which satisfy the following um, equivalent. Okay, so how to prove it? So assume not. So then it means that for every pair, alpha and beta, you can assign a weakness. So, so two chunks, A and B. Uh, yeah, so, so you can think about it as a coloring of pairs of omega two, into into, uh, into product of counter algebra. So now, because we have GCH, Erdős uh, Radov theorem, which give give us an uncountable monochromatic uh, subset. 
So uh, uh, Erdos Rado means that in this in this situation it's two to the two to the omega arrows uh, omega one uh, uh, two omega right so so we are coloring stars into countably many colors so we are able to find this deep uncountable monochromatic uh, lambda we will assume that this lambda is just omega one uh, for simplicity and we have the the the, 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 the one color here. Then uh, it's not exactly then, but I'm avoiding now small techni technicality. Then we have uh, that for every alpha and beta, uh, alpha uh, phi alpha. Yeah, we have we have what is written here, right? That that uh, uh, that we have this witness, this power which is witnessing, and I assume that it is witnessing in this way. I will repeat repeat it on the next slide. So. For every alpha and beta, we have this. This uh, we have fixed a and b, which works for every alpha and beta. And now uh, we can take supremum of all this phi alpha a's, uh, phi phi yes, I mean phi alpha of a for each alpha. Uh, uh, we don't know what is the supremum, but we know that uh, it has to be attained on some countable uh, stage because of CCC. So, by the way, this proof works not only for measure algebras from any other, but uh, I, I do it only for measure algebras. So, by CCC, this supremum is attained somewhere on the countable step. And now, uh, look at this at this step with, with, when it is attained. So the step is gamma. So of course, D uh, has to be disjoint with uh, uh, phi gamma of D because of the uh, of what is written above, right? This is how A and B works. And gamma is bigger than any alpha, smaller than gamma. Uh, and okay, but on the other, but if we if we go one step further. We uh, we uh, we arrive to a contradiction because now uh, phi gamma plus one of a uh, cannot be disjoint with phi gamma of b, but of course phi gamma plus one of a is in the supremum because it is supremum of everything of every f of phi alpha of a. So this is contradiction. So this contradiction tells means that we found two symmetrics alpha and beta. And now, okay, so the, this claim is proved, right? Uh, and now uh, you use the Sikorsky extension lemma. So Sikorsky extension lemma is a theorem telling you what conditions has to be uh, satisfied to extend a function to a, a homomorphism or, or, or isomorphism. There are different, uh, different versions of, of, of this lemma. And uh, if you look at these conditions we ha which have to be fulfilled, which are in Sikorsky extension lemma, this is this translates immediately to this symmetricity, to this symmetry. So, uh, so Sikorsky extension lemma tell us that there is this 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 automorphism which we were looking for. <laughs> So, uh, so the, the theorem is proved, and uh, uh, this proof is not so much different from the original proof of Kuhnman. I mean, if you uh, if you look from distance, deep, deep enough distance, this is these are the same proofs, but but uh, but Kuhnman used different tools and techniques. And by the way, I I, I know this proof only because. Uh, Piotr Koschmider told me it once, uh, and he claimed that it is not written anywhere, and that he learned it from somebody, and that now I should feel morally obliged to tell it to at least one person in the future. Uh, but I'm not completely sure how, about how, how it is about it. I mean, uh, if it is published or, or not published, maybe some of, I, I, I mean, some, some of it has to be published because uh, in this papers, uh, where you study uh, you know, spectra of powers, uh, I guess you have to use it. So, so 
maybe some of you know where it is coming from. Okay, uh, uh, anyway. Uh, uh, so now I want to turn to uh, another application of this uh, approach, uh, of this homomorphism approach. Uh, and this is what I what I mentioned before. But sometimes you take uh, a bullet algebra from the old uh, uh, from the grand model. You go to the forcing extension and 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 you obtain you take stone space of this bullet algebra and you obtain some interesting object. So uh, this is a, this theorem is a is an example. Uh, but 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 I have to mention that okay so. This theorem says that in the classical random model, there is so-called Yefimov space, so infinite compact space. It does not have non-trivial conver convergent sequences. Uh, non-trivial means that they are not, not eventually e equal. Uh, I mean, not eventually uh, the, the same point. Uh, and so so the Yefimov space, space is, is should be quite big, but on the other hand, it's not big, uh, too big. It means uh, there is no copy of beta omega. So by the way, it is still open problem if there is an theme of space in uh, Z of T. Uh, and there are many, many uh, results about existence of theme of spaces in different models. Uh, uh, so the, the, the idea of the proof of, of Dow and Fleming is to take a Boolean algebra of, 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 of P omega mod finite from the grant model to go into the forcing extension with the same algebra. So you, 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 you take only old subsets of omega. And then you, you, you take a stone space. And for free, the stone space does not contain a copy of beta omega because it is of, the, of weight omega 1. Uh, and of course, it is not so trivial that there are no non-trivial convergent sequence. And this, the, uh, this, uh, there are many papers by Christina Brech, by Piotr Koshmide, Damian Sobota, Lubomir Domski, uh, where you, you you do something similar. So you take some Boolean algebra from the grand model, for for example, P omega mod finite, or some complete Boolean algebra. And 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 uh, you you look at the stone space in the forcing extension, not not necessarily in the random model in, the, in, in other models. Uh, okay, so I'm going to to I will not prove it, but uh, yes, I will show you something about connected to this theorem. So now. Uh, I want to tell you the, uh, the 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 second reason why measure algebras are are nice uh, if you if you look at the names for ultra filters as Boolean homomorphism. Uh, the second reason is that that Boolean measure algebras are metric spaces. So uh, if you have a measure on a Boolean algebra uh, which is strictly positive, then you have a metric. It's it's called Flechet-Nikodym metric. So uh, measure algebras are metric spaces, and uh, and so we can we can uh, we can define in this space in the set of homomorphisms from A to to a measure algebra for any A. Uh, this kind of convergence. So we say that that uh, homomorphisms converge metrically pointwise. Uh, if it converges pointwise, right? So uh, uh, yeah, because because measure algebra has a metric, then then this is very natural notion. And uh, a remark uh, uh, again, if you look at the stone space not as a space of ultra filters, but as a space of homomorphisms into trivial algebra. Then uh, stone topology is exactly pointwise convergence topology. Okay, I, I have to say I, I, I deal I, 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 I'm dealing with stone spaces for many years, but for many years I haven't been aware that it's like that. Uh, so it's just uh, uh, it's, 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 it's very easy, but yeah, but you have to think about it. That, that 
strong space, uh, strong topology is in fact the, the product topology. And again, uh, so so uh, so this means that the, the definition above is is a natural generalization of the strong topology. And the interesting question is how it is related to uh, to the convergence uh, uh, in the extension. So we, we know that homomorphisms give us names. Names give us homomorphisms. So if uh, if uh, so, we know that if the in the extension uh, the the ultra filter converges to to some ultra filter, then this homomorphism has to be metrically uh, convert metrically pointwise convert uh, convergent to the appropriate uh, homomorphism. Uh, unfortunately, there is, this, is, this is not uh, equivalent. If you want to have equivalence, you have to change your notion of convergence. Ah, by the way, this is just a side remark. Uh, so uh, if, if we have convergence of names in the extension, then uh, if you look at the measures induced by, by, by these names, you, you have to have weak star convergence. But it's not very much re relevant to so what I'm going to tell you now. Uh, so uh, we say in a Boolean algebra, we have any Boolean algebra, we have a natural notion on convergence. We say that that uh, that a sequence of uh, elements of Boolean algebra converges algebraica, uh, algebraically uh, if if the lin sup is equal to lin inf. Uh, and it's equal to this to this to this limit. And so you can you can uh, define immediately pointwise. Uh, I'm not going to define it. It's, it's it's obvious what I mean by pointwise algebraic convergence, right? It means that that homomorphisms are pointwise algebraically convergent if they are convergent uh, on every uh, on every argument. And, and here you have uh, you have uh, equivalence. So exactly uh, names uh, converge. Uh, I mean sequence of names converges if if if, on, if if and only if you have this point with algebraic convergence. This is not any. I mean the proof is just a translation. Nothing really interesting, but we have this equivalence. And we we can once more we can take an advantage that we are dealing with measure uh, algebras. We can define the third uh, type of convergence, the uniform con convergence. Again, just because uh, measure algebra is a metric space, then 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 we can define uh, uniform convergence. And uh, this. Uh, this convergence uh, exactly translates almost exactly to the trivial convergence of of uh, of ultra filters in the extension. So, if we have that that uh, sequence of ultra filters in the extension converges trivially, then we know that that the homomorphism converges uniformly. It is not equivalent, but it is almost equivalent if we have that something is uh, convergent. Non-trivially, then, then the homomorphism cannot converge to uniform. And this theorem is not so easy to prove. Uh, and I, I'm going to, um, I'm not going to, to, to make even a sketch of the proof, but I'm going to show you the most important step in the proof. So the most important step is uh, it comes when, when we when we have such a situation. Assume that we have uh, uh, we force with measure algebra, and we know that 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 uh, we have two names for for alpha filters, and we know that they are different. Then what it means that it means that we know that there is an element of the old of the A, which which distinguish these two uh, alpha filters. But if we want to have this A in our hands in the grand model, then of course, uh, what we have? We have that there is an anti-chain of, of conditions in the measure algebra and a sequence of elements of, of, of the Boolean algebra such that, okay, for, for, for a particular AN, we know that there is a condition forcing that this is exactly this, 
this, this element distinguishing outside regions. The problem is that uh, a priori we cannot tell much about about the measure of this Tn. Okay, we know that it is anti-chain, but okay, this anti-chain can can a priori consist of very small elements. But in fact, uh, yes, in fact we can say something about the measure of this Tn. And uh, and uh, to to see that. I have to ask you to imagine a, a, a fence, a picket fence, like on this picture. So it consists of, of rails, uh, this is important, and finitely many rails. And, uh, and it is important that it looks like, this, like at the picture, so it is not painted. So we want to paint it. So we want to paint it, so we have the following uh, situation. So we have this picket fence, and uh, there are two guys which are painting it. There are two sides of this fence, and we want to paint it in this way that, uh, that th there is only one, one condition. On, 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 uh, if you take a rail, you cannot use the same color from the both sides of this rail, okay? So you, you, you color the, 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 the fence in this way. And uh, then uh, it doesn't depend on, the, on, the, on the how many colors you use. You can use infinitely many, uh, infinitely many. You can use as much as you, as, as you want. Uh, you can use step two. Uh, uh, no matter how you do it, you will always find uh, uh, n over four many rails such that if you look at the one side of the of the fence uh, and you use at the, and you look at the colors used at the one side and the colors used at the the other side they are disjoint so no colors from 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 the one side is used uh, on the on the other side in this in this of course subset of, of rays but the subset is not is is at least of size n over 4 okay and uh, there, there, this is not difficult. Uh, uh, this, there are many proofs of, you can prove it in many ways. And I want to present one way, which is not the simplest one, not the, not the shortest, but uh, is, I think it's, it's easiest to, to, to draw. So now I have to, uh, for, a, for a minute, I have to stop sharing and, oh. And I, I hope you see uh, my piece of paper. Okay. Do, do you see the, do you see all of it? Because I, I, I not, uh, I cannot see if you see it. So, uh, uh, so you have you have here you have this fence and and uh, we will construct a graph and the graph the vertices of the graph will be element with the rails okay so every vertex represents a rail and 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 this the, these labels are, are represent colors which we use so we, we imagine that we use the natural uh, numbers as colors and and what is on the first position is the color on the one side and what is in the second position is the color on the other side and now we construct a graph i mean i will add edges to this graph in the following way we 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 look at a vertice and by uh, by black uh, color we will uh, we will uh, connect uh, those vertices which has the same uh, number as one, but on the on the second place. Okay, so like here, here, and I think this is all. Okay, so uh, I, I I connected it because here is one and here is one, here is one and here is one. Okay, I'm still keeping uh, my attention on this vertices. And now I use another color to, to, to connect vertices, which has the same thing as, as this vertice on the second position. 
So here, here, where we have zero, we have zero also here at the first finish. Okay. And now we proceed. What does it mean if we proceed? We take some of the vertices which are which which are already connected by some edge, and we do the same thing, but now we switch colors. So so we we connect. Let let's take a look at this uh, vertex. We collect connect by by black uh, color everything which has the same thing, uh, which has one on the first position. Okay, so we already have this vertex connect vertex connected. We also connect this and this, and by now by the red color we con connect everything which has zero at the at the second uh, position so yeah and we proceed so 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 uh, now we take another ver ver vertex which which has been already con connected in this first move uh, uh, and so on and so on and we are we are keeping switching colors uh, and uh, at some point, maybe we are we, we, we cannot add any any edge, but maybe there are still some uh, some some vertices which are not connected, but they should be like here. So then we start again, choosing any color we want. Okay, so in this procedure, we will get two graphs: black graph and red graph, and uh, and uh, if you look at the black graph. Uh, this graph will not have any uh, cycles of, of, of odd uh, length. Okay, so for example, it cannot have a uh, cycle of length three because it will it would exactly mean that that one of this of the vertices of the cycle has to have the same thing at the first position and the same on the second, which is impossible because our coloring should be like that that the rail is painted in different colors. So they are not, and in the same way we can you, you can see that that there are not only no cycles of size three but also no cycles of size of odd size. So at the very end we obtain then the same of course of, apply to the red graph. So so at the end we have if you look at the red graph this uh, uh, this um, property that there are no odd cycles means that it is bipartite graph. Bipartite graph means that there are, you can divide uh, vertices into two groups, such that uh, within one group, no, there is no connection. Then there is no edge. So you divide. Uh, you take uh, the bigger, bigger part, or if they are equal, then you take whatever. So you take the bigger part, and then you you forget about the, the those vertices. You look how the the red graph looks looks here, and the red graph is also the bipartite, and uh, uh, so so again it looks like that, and uh, again you uh, uh, you choose the bigger uh, bigger part. And uh, now I see that there is some chat. Should I should I read what is okay? Uh, so what, what what do you have at the end? You 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 choose uh, anti-click with respect to the black graph. You choose uh, anti-click with respect. Then you choose uh, in this anti-click you choose anti-click uh, with respect to the red graph. Uh, so, so you obtain uh, a set which has at least n over four many elements because two times you choose something which is at least a half, and which is anti-click with respect to both black and red graph. And with this exactly means that that there are no rails, uh, no color uh, appears on the both sides of the of the path. Okay, so now let me go back here. Uh, so what does it mean 
uh, it means that uh, it means that exactly uh, it means uh, it gives us a theorem that if you have a measure algebra and you know that there are two ultra filters which are distinct then you can find quite big condition condition of, of measure at least one over four which are and a concrete element from the grant model this is important such that uh, you have that p forces uh, that this is this is this this a uh, distinguish these two ultra filters and this is the core the, and the proof is by this this this, this hand thing and this is the core uh, uh, of the theorem that that this uniform convergence uh, has connection to this uh, trivial convergence okay uh, so uh, as so by this we have the following theorem uh, the stone space in the extension does not have non-trivial convergent sequences if and only if every pointwise algebraically convergent sequence of homomorphisms from A to the measure algebra converges uniformly. So you have translation of the of the theorem from the extension to quite easy uh, uh, statement in the grant model. This is the, the second ballad is is purely from the grant model. So you can uh, uh, so, so, so the happy end would be if if uh, uh, if we are, if we can prove that, uh, for example, for p omega mod finite, uh, uh, of course every pointwise algebraic convergent sequence uh, is uh, uniformly convergent because it would give us simple uh, proof of of Dow and Fleming result. Uh, we didn't manage to do that. I mean, uh, we had some partial results and they are quite promising. I mean. Is interesting because we used uh, ideas from coding theory, which was quite surprising. So, so called perfect Hamming code. But the proof started to be quite complicated, more complicated than the or original. So, uh, so we took it as, as a, uh, so, uh, in fact, we, by the Dow and Fleming result, now we can say that, that every pointwise algebraic convergent, convergent sequence of homomorphisms. Uh, from p omega mod finite or from complete Boolean algebra converges uniformly. So uh, this is it, and uh, and uh, uh, if you if you think about this this previous type of convergence, this this, this easiest one, this pointwise uh, metrically convergence, it would be nice if there is a Boolean algebra which uh, which for which every pointwise convergent um, uh, sequence of homomorphism is uniformly convergent because it would mean that 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 it, it would be some kind of strong Yefimov space in the extension, but it is not true. So for every Boolean algebra, you will always find uh, a homomorphism which converges pointwise metrically but not uniformly. Okay, so I think I think this is this is exactly uh, everything which I wanted to tell you. So thanks a lot for the attention. Okay. So so you have still still uh, uh, seven minutes or so so time, but please stop here, right? Thank you very much. Um, so uh, uh, are there any any questions, comments? Um, okay. Uh, yeah. Um, so you 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 considered um, 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 extension by by random algebra, but how much of your your uh, arguments survive if you use uh, just a uh, uh, Finitely additive measure. I, I mean, uh, uh, Boolean algebras with a finitely additive measure. Uh, is it uh, uh, quite essential that you you use measure arbitrary or how how is is? Uh, I, I I I'm not sure how how much. I mean, uh, because of course, uh, if you. 
So you you would like to have something which is complete Boolean algebra and which has uh, yes, uh, finite reality measure at least. Yeah. Finite additive measure, so like Cohen, but uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, I, I suppose that that's part of the argument will survive, survive because. Uh, uh, but at some point, you 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 would like to. Uh, at some point, uh, actually, now I don't I don't see much of the use that that the measure is on the bullet, on the measure algebra that the measure is countably additive. I'm I'm pretty sure that that I use it because it's easy to use it without noticing it, right? So perhaps they are at that point, but now I don't I, I don't I don't see any and uh, anyway the much of what I what I what I told uh, in the first part can be even translated to to uh, to CCC forcing, but uh, I, I haven't used measures so much there. But for mm -hmm. the second part, I, I suppose that yeah. uh, that's mm -hmm. important that there is this countably additive measure. Mm -hmm. um. And any other comments or questions? So, so if not, uh, then let's thank the speaker. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much.